changed the uh, suspension relay and it worked for 30 miles strangely enough but then back to square one now one could argue it's probably a bad connection to the relay or we just managed to cause whatever fault was lurking in the background to come and go we're going to find out as you can see the rear suspension has dropped considerably on this and always has been a very slight air leak it probably takes like two weeks for it to drop significantly and then usually by the time you've started off it's jacked itself back up again so it's not a real issue I'm not quite sure where that leak will be but anyway as the first thing to check i'm going to look at the earth tag on the rear air suspension chassis underneath the that's on the actual module that's bolted underneath the hummer and we're going to see if the earth has got a good connection if that's okay we're then going to check the connector going to the air suspension unit to see if we can see the relay through the through the pins and then the only other thing remaining from that is the air suspension module itself This is the air suspension module, which is very difficult to get a picture of when you're so close to it. But we're now facing towards the rear of the vehicle. You can see there's the tote hitch. Here, we can you can just see on my finger there is the earth tag, which looks pretty solid to me. to say that it actually goes to earth but i would say it probably does that looks pretty good so we're just going to to measure between this plate and the chassis to see what the earth resistance is like here is the multimeter underneath the air suspension unit you can see i've clipped the ground onto the earth tag and i'm using my red crocodile lead onto the chassis just to, to measure the ohms you can see it reads about 0.2 so very 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 good connection so it's unlikely to be the cause of our problem. Here we have the wiring diagram for a H2 2005 twin compressor unit. This wiring diagram may also apply up to model year 2007. It may also be useful when servicing single compressor units. There, are, there is some information on the diagram about that. On the left here, we have the wiring from the main H2 chassis. We've got a twin connector here, which is the quite high powered connector which brings in the uh, voltages from the air suspension relay and controls the compressors on board the air suspension unit. Also is a 16-way connector which brings in all the controls and sensors and switches and everything that goes into the air suspension unit as well. Note on the air suspension unit, ground G402 is the connection to the main body on the Hummer. This is the only earth connection to the air suspension module. Without it, it just won't work. The problem we're having is connected with the air suspension relay control, which is circuit 3M. This comes through to the air suspension module and it goes to pin 13 on that module. So that is a, an area that we may have a problem with. I've pulled the main 16-way connector apart. You can see that that pin there is corroded. That, I believe, happens to be the air suspension relay control signal. And the pin next to that, to the left of it, is the ground return from the same relay. I've put some wires into the corresponding air suspension relay wires. So this is the main Hummer harness. These are the crocodile clips from my meter. I zeroed the meter out and I'm now measuring the relay circuit and you can see there's about 75 ohms in the circuit which I believe is is the resistance of the air suspension relay coil as you can see that pin is corroded and um, what I'm going to double check now is to see that the circuit inside the air suspension module is okay and then we'll know that it's that that circuit for sure looking at our diagram we can see that the pins by my thumbnail, the one with the 
little ring on it, which is the air suspension relay ground, and the one next to it is the suspension relay control. So it's the it's the second and third pins along. The the first pin is unoccupied, which agrees with this connector here. So it's not the first one, which is the serial comms, but it's the next two. I pretty much know for a fact that internally inside this module, that relay ground, which is which is called relay ground, it's actually not chassis connects internally inside the control module to ground now it appears not to be the case if we stick our probe on there and check there is no connection to ground which it indicates to me that it's the air suspension module that's got a problem it's a bit theoretical at the moment i'm going to clean that pin up i'm going to use a fiberglass brush to actually scrape the oxidization off and then I'm going to spray it with contact cleaner and put that connector back together. This is the fiberglass brush which I'm going to use to clean the pins up. I'm going to do both sides of that very gently. I'm not going to go mad. Just clean off the corrosion and then I'm going to spray both halves of the connector with contact cleaner. As you can see I've cleaned that connector up quite well. It looks pretty much the only problem with that is the fact that I can't do the internal pins in here so i've sprayed it with contact cleaner and i'm now going to put it back together so you can see despite the connector being corroded i think it was actually making contact and we've now still got service air suspension buzzing things out putting these wires in there checking things out i just had a tug on the corresponding wire and this wire just came out I could confirm that that is the effective ground that takes the air suspension relay ground to the current monitoring ground inside the electronic module. So that wire is the root cause. We've just lost all connectivity and that's the problem. So we need to somehow repair that cable. It's a bit tricky to do. We need some kind of pin extraction tool. I'm not quite sure how you get those pins out. I do have a spare harness, so somehow we've got to re-terminate that pin and get it out. There may be a way of pushing those pins through. So it's the fourth place along from the end. One, two, three, four. You can see where it's come out of there. That wire has fractured off over time. In some ways it's good news, it's not the module. It just needs that connector repairing. Here is the connector and you can see this is the pin that's come out. So I'm going to unwrap this section of taped harness back pull out the comb which is here and then try and push that pin out the fourth slot along uh, the actual third physical pin i've removed the tape back from on this here so that's that stage done the locking comb should now come out i've just unclipped the latches on the side and we could take that out store that away for, for a while now we're left with pushing the pin out which I'm going to try and attempt, um, but not whilst I'm videoing. I managed to get the pin started. It's tricky to show, but you could just see that I've pushed it up a little bit. And you could see that the back of the pin is starting to come out. I'm just going to get a pair of long nose pliers to push it out. I now have a pair of long nose pliers and I'm going to push out the pin. So I now have the pin loose and I just wanted to record the way that it can make. You can see this pin is corroded, the damper's gone in. You can see there's a little tab on the back and you can see the side profile. It actually goes in this way with the locking or whatever the locking tab is facing towards me. That's the state of the pin. I think that pin needs replacing. As you can see, I've cleaned up the wire. I think it's important to degrease it and get all of the adhesive off the tape to remove that so that when we make a new joint it will seal properly. Now to help me do this I've got a soldering iron and I've got a hot air gun as well. I know these are probably not everybody will have these but I unfortunately do. So the next thing I'm going to do is to tin the wire. It's going to be hard to show this but the the wire has actually got corroded. I don't know if you've ever seen this before where wire the actual oxidization gets in through the sleeve and into the wire so I've had to cut it back a little bit further than I would have liked but hopefully that will tin. So I don't know if you can see this but the internal strands of the wire are corroded and despite all my attempts I just can't solder them. So I'm gonna have to clean each individual strand and get the corrosion off before I can tin it which goes to prove that tinning is vital. This would never have soldered. I don't know if that's got a 
good enough picture there for you to see, but you can see it's, it's black. It's not so bad a bit further up the cable than it was at the start, but um, definitely is an issue. I've done a pair of protective latex gloves just so that I, A, I don't get any um, fabulous particles in my finger and B, because it keeps the grease off the wire, it just won't solder if you get greasy hands on it. I've tried to clean every single strand. I'm not quite done yet, but I'm just going to go a bit more until I get that copper look and every bit of it's nice and shiny. Well, I think that's as good as it's going to get. I'm going to try and see if I can tin that now. Where I failed before, I'll try again. Hopefully this time I've got it. I can definitely see copper. I'll try tinning that now. So finally, I think I've managed to get enough solder on there for it to tin. I'm now going to try and put the joint together. Got the soldering heat shrink ferrule in place. I'm just now going to run the heat gun over it. So I've done the joint. I've got no way of knowing if that is actually soldered inside. The only way will be to pull on it and I guess to see if it actually connects electrically. It's got to be strong and it's got to have been soldered. Just waiting for it to cool down a bit now. No idea if that's actually soldered. Can't tell. There's no visible sign. The heat gun is one I use for printed circuit boards so that definitely gets solder hot. That, that I do know. So we'll give it a test. Well, the short answer was no, it didn't actually solder. I'm going to go to another plan. So my next plan is to put some heat shrink on and I'm going to solder the joints by hand together. That way I know that they're soldered and that the electric, they're electrically strong. And then I'll shrink, shrink the heat sink over the top. So you can see I've actually got that well soldered. Unfortunately, some of the insulations shrunk back on the actual cable itself, on the wire itself, but that won't matter. We're now going to heat shrink that in place. So there you have the wire with the heat shrink on, and I'm going to put another protective layer heat shrink, heat shrink over the top. I've now covered the wire with heat shrink all the way over. It's just to give it some strength and, uh, and another chance for the moisture not to get in. The pin just slid nicely back in place and is locked in. I'm now going to put the comb back in. The comb's back in, the wire's not overly tight. So the wire's back in, it's not under stress and I will retape the cables back together. Cleaned off the wires or give them a wipe over with IPA just to make sure that the tape sticks not just going to tape it up. Okay, retape the connector, it's all back together. So I think we can reconnect. All of the cables have been put back together. Two reasons why that connector failed. One of them is the current that it takes. I think it's probably a bit overloaded. And the other one, this may be able to move a bit too much. It probably needs cable tying to the corner here so that it can't move. And that's what I'm going to do. You can see this cable tie is square to this edge. And this one goes through that cable tie and then around the cable so you don't put any kind of transitional strain on the cable itself that should hold it firmly square this is going nowhere in there nice and, nice and square so one one zero zero one nine two miles is the odometer reading and the air suspension seems to be working fine just going to take a look See the air suspension is now up, the truck is now level, so that's working. Thank you for watching this video. Please give the thumbs up, share and subscribe. Oh, and don't forget the alert button.